Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. A very, very warm welcome to everyone out there, wherever you are in this world. It is a great privilege and an honor to be running Live, Learn, Teach, Inspire twice in one month. And we have got, like every time we run this program, we have phenomenal people coming on the show. We are very privileged to connect and engage with the most unbelievable and influential people um, on this journey. And Tonight, today is no different. I have an incredible guest backstage, Zarifa Al Ghaffari, an amazing woman all the way from Afghanistan. Just at the age of 24, she became Afghan's youngest female mayor. And in 2022, so not that long ago, she received the International Women's Rights Award at the United Nations Geneva Summit. But I can assure you, Zarifa's journey has been less than comfortable. She is a huge critic of the Taliban. Zarifa came to the world attention through her amazing Netflix documentary. And I urge every single one of you out there watching this to please watch this documentary. It's called In Her Hands and her memoir, which Zarifa is called A Woman's Battle in a Man's World. And the documentary follows Zarif Zarifa's crusade to uplift democracy and women's rights in her home country. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this part of the world, uh, women are shunned uh, and looked down upon and they are deprived from many things and one of them is absolutely around the thing of education. And after the Taliban returned to power uh, in Kabul, Zarifa had to flee the country. Her life was in danger. She's, someone tried to assassinate her. She's been tortured. She's been through many, many challenging situations. And in that Netflix journey, you will be able to see this incredible, painful um, sort of depiction of life in Afghanistan and how it's been over the last uh, couple of decades. You know, as a woman, a daughter, a mayor, and, and, and a citizen of that country, she is no longer welcome in her own country. But again, her story very much focuses and underpins on, on the hope that she lays, you know, in her vision, not to take no for an answer. And tonight, I'd like to you know, obviously go down this journey with Sarifa and welcome her into the room and run through a couple of questions that we will be engaging in a lovely bit of conversation. And I'm so excited. Sarifa, welcome in. Hey, Philip. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. And uh, hello to everyone, uh, wherever around the world they're watching us. Looking oh. forward to this uh, great discussion. Assalamu alaikum. Lovely to see you. Really, really lovely to see you. And you and I first met in May, which was such a privilege. You addressed an incredible audience and you took everyone by storm when, 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 we, when you shared our, your story with us. And, and I know as a result, there's been some wonderful interaction amongst the group of people that we were with who've taken some great action to support you and your cause. And it's just amazing. You're, you're more than a brave woman. You're incredible. And if I may announce to everyone, you also have got a beautiful, beautiful little baby girl. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm blessed to be a mom to now two months and a half uh, old uh, baby girl. Uh, her name is Lara. Uh, she is doing incredibly amazing. Uh, and she is a blessing to my life. She has changed the entire my life to, to, to the beautiful one. I am blessed to have her. That is just so beautiful. So, Rifa, I know we've got a short window tonight, unfortunately. 
I'd love to start off by asking you where we are in the world right now. What is the current situation when it comes to the, 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 the women, the ladies in Afghanistan right now? Where are we at? Unfortunately, in Afghanistan, we are uh, 100 years back. Uh, we are living uh, the age of students once again in Afghanistan, in particular when it comes to the women's rights and women's rights. Uh, Afghanistan is the only one country around the world where women are allowed to be on the streets, uh, sell their children, sell their households, uh, to, to die, to be stoned, to be wiped, to be killed in public, to be tortured, to be imprisoned to be uh, abandoned uh, from uh, their education right, to, to not to go to school, to, to university, to not to work, but, uh, you know, are not allowed to, to at least live a normal life as every human being, a normal being on the globe. Uh, uh, and, and despite that, the poverty is uh, uh, very, very, uh, or people are surviving of hunger uh, very badly. Uh, in, uh, in particular, nowadays, it's a very big crisis happening in one of the provinces, Herat province. Uh, the earthquake, well, earthquake um, uh, which happened, uh, it had like more than 5,000 people died and then more than 9,000 people are injured and more than 3,000 houses and uh, around three villages totally destroyed. So, uh, and then the winter is already coming. So people are sleeping in the streets. There is no shelter. There is no food. Uh, so Afghanistan is going through a, a very, very tough uh, situation, not only inside the country, but when it comes to the political situation globally as well, Afghanistan is, uh, really suffering uh the, the uh, afghanistan topic is not more anymore uh, something to be discussed on global stage afghanistan is not having the piece of uh, news anymore it's not a red light a red line or a, a, a hot news or red news uh so afghanistan has just been forgotten at all uh and that's why the extremist group of Taliban who are leading that country somehow uh, by, by the direct or indirect support of international community, uh, they are now just making life of everyone, in, uh, in particular women, just for help. Uh, that, is, that is so harrowing to hear uh, when you share that. And I know right now when we look at the world, it's definitely feels a little bit upside down across the world. But I know that, as you said, Afghanistan has definitely been, seems to be forgotten about, and that is a travesty in itself. And when I met you and you presented to uh, the, the, the group of us, I remember you sharing with us uh, some quite interesting and very uh, troubling footage of what actually takes place in Afghanistan of, uh, you know, women being stoned in public and people being treated worse than they would you know treat treat anything let let alone i mean in this day and age as we know people treat animals better than women are treated in in and, and not, i'm not for one second saying one should treat anyone or anything badly but i know you showed us some very harrowing footage of you trying to sort of explain and and, and, and talk to the leaders um i'd love to hear your experience of of of, of the mindset that you are dealing with when it comes to explaining you know how things should really be in Afghanistan and that there should be a level playing field? Uh, Afghanistan is a very beautiful country. It's a mountainous, beautiful country. It's the heart of Asia. Geopolitically, Afghanistan is a very important uh, country globally for uh, trade, for business, for politics, for, for so many things. Uh, Afghanistan have been playing a great role into connecting uh, dozens of corners of the world, including Europe to Asia. Uh, Afghanistan has the beauty of different languages, the beauty, beauty of different uh, ethnicities, different cultures. Uh, 
uh, and and different uh, religion, but all together coming uh, and making uh, a beautiful nation, a beautiful country with a great nation. Uh, and and unfortunately, when uh, uh, when despite knowing this all about your country, you go through all those uh, stories. Uh, from past decades when uh, you were not born and then you remember all whatever is happening around your own life and you are seeing that and you are witnessing it it is definitely terrible to to uh, deal with it uh, in particular when you are uh, you were just six years old when everything got to a new change and you had the hope and um, uh, you were dreaming of something more beautiful, at least for your own uh, child or daughter for next generation. And then suddenly everything collapsed and you, the only thing you, you, you have left in your hand is just few memories uh, from your own country of, of uh, the good times of that. So, and it's really heartbreaking. I, uh, I still uh, get tears in my eyes when I'm talking about my country. I still miss that country. I miss the beauty of the country. I miss the mountains, air, food, anything of that country. But uh, but despite all that, what really hurts it's um, it's the silence of the world. Uh, and as as a person like me who knows everything, just sitting there and watching all, it is it's really hard to bear. Um, and I don't know how to explain it at all. But yeah, it is. It is the most difficult thing anyone can deal with it. I'm sorry if anybody hears me. I can't hear you, Philip. I right. can't. Right. My apologies. Oh, sorry. What I was saying is thank you for sharing that. Why has the situation turned this bad for, for women in Afghanistan? What, what is the, the, the mindlessness behind this? Why has it become such a, a dreadful ex, a, a sort of existence for these incredible women in, in your beautiful country? Oh, actually, it's uh, uh, there are a few reasons, but let me share some concrete ones. First, Afghanistan as a uh, important country uh, and uh, as the geopolitical uh, location and situation of this country, uh, this country has been always the, the middle or the center of uh, global games, in particular intelligence games, since 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 decades and decades. Uh, since the time of uh, British Empire and then Russian Empire and until now, uh, Soviet Empire until now. Uh, that's one piece that uh, the, the leaders of the world, the ones who play power games, they always uh, they always seek their own benefits uh, by by uh, playing their own um, uh, dirty games in that country and that and through that country into entire region. That's one uh, issue. The second point is definitely uh, the, the the last uh, twenty years. Uh, last twenty years have been uh, great efforts made by Afghan people themselves, by the help of definitely international community in some context, uh, to 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 bring a beautiful piece of their to their lives and to change the. the uh, to the end future of the, themselves and their next generation. But that all efforts came to an end when the Doha deal was signed by U.S. with Taliban. A, f a free, democratic, and a uh, so-called human rights defender country comes, uh, comes up and uh, signs a deal with a, uh, with a group that uh, UN, they are still blacklisted in United Nations. They are still called tourist group. They are still having uh, dozens of dollars as, uh, as a, a price on their head. Uh, and then, you know, with such a group, a uh, country comes and signs a deal. And then it's like kind of selling at 
country with entire the, the uh, nation and the hopes, the dreams, the today and future of, of these uh, generations living in that country to a group of terrorists because of their own benefits. Because, uh, we all know that Taliban are uh, more cheaper soldiers, more uh, more easy used soldiers uh, for uh, those players. Uh, so that's the second thing. And the last thing is about uh, inside uh, issues inside the country. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't uh, be able, we were not able to get more women educated. We were not, we failed to connect central uh, areas into uh, villages of that country. We couldn't, we were not able to uh, really bring that woman rights topic and on a country concrete level to inherit uh, the best of it in society unfortunately uh, those bad and uh, extremist ideologies those uh, uh, you know the, the gender discrimination and extremist ideologies and worse uh, wrong interpretation of uh, Islamic values uh, and verses in Afghanistan by by some extremist people. Those all together came and, and uh, you know uh, have been uh, have been making a very dark point to the life of entire nation, but in particular women of that country. And now whatever we are going through, uh, in particular right now, uh, it is just because of the international community. Uh, they have bring this uh, this is uh, Taliban and are uh, into power. They were the reason to to give them this opportunity to do this all. And when we raise our voices, when we try to uh, convince the world, they never heard us. They never listened to us. And now also, they are just letting us burn there. Uh, we all know that there is no topic of Afghanistan anymore no one interested to talk about Afghanistan and the women of Afghanistan in particular are to no one speaks about it so including the United Nations despite having an active mission in Afghanistan United Nations failed to at least protect the rights of normal citizens of that country uh, due to their own policies so uh yeah all together whatever we are going through it's just um uh, yeah we had some parts of it uh, that uh, we share the blame, every one of us, including me, uh, and to anyone else. But uh, it came from international community on us. That is absolutely well. It's harrowing to hear um, how that has sort of unfolded and and the circumstances that we are that they are faced with. Um, Zarifa, tell me something. What, as a young lady, I mean, obviously you were exposed to a lot growing up. What what motivated you to really pursue this career in politics, especially in a country where it was so male dominated? What what really what where did the vision and, and this this incredible inner vavavum come from to help to, to push you? Oh, actually, so if you already, uh, Philip, you already answered the question within your own question, male-dominated society. The male-dominated society of Afghanistan itself been a reason uh, which uh, made me to to decide to walk to public and to uh, to not quickly uh, walk away. Uh, I was six years old when I started realizing and finding out how differently I'm being treated than my brothers, uh, than all the men around my community. How amazingly my mom has to sit in corner when there are dozens of men, um, friends of my dad or colleagues of my dad coming and entering our house. How I should not sit with those men when they are talking about politics or maybe social life, uh, you know, with my dad in a room and I'm not allowed to enter that room because I'm a girl and yeah, six years old girl, but uh, for my mom, I was a young girl. 
So uh, knowing that, I feel like it's, uh, I, I was feeling that it's just for me. And I was like having, having this feeling of why my parents are uh, treating me different than my own brothers. I am elder than them. They are younger than me. They are, I'm stronger. I am doing a lot. I am, uh, you know, I, I can do uh, too much and I'm doing too much for this family and an evil one, but still I'm not as, as much as I was able that, but not, uh, I'm not getting the, there what, where my brothers are standing. So then uh, it started from this uh, point, like from a fight for myself. And then, uh, and I knew that the only solution for this is to get educated, to go to university, and finally to work and earn some money and be independent girl for yourself. But then going to university, I realized that when I, I became kind of uh, involved in communities, I, I, I kind of connected different societies, different people. I'm, I have met uh, dozens of, you know, uh, friends and I have made colleagues. And then I realized that it's, uh, I, I have learned a lot about whatever is happening around the world. So then I realized that it's not just me. It's not just my family. It is everywhere. As a woman, you are facing this everywhere. Uh, doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter what you are doing. Doesn't matter whom you are uh, involved with, but you will be treated differently than me all around the world, everywhere, uh, anywhere. And in particular in Afghanistan, Afghanistan is a male dominated country. Here, this is the rule. This is the way people live. Uh, so then, um, and then yeah, definitely the, the, the mission got bigger and I was like, okay, let's change something for entire community. And I started from building up an NGO and then a radio station. Uh, the radio station I, I started with, uh, with a, with a man who is now having the, uh, uh, you know, who is now, is, who is now privileged to be my husband and to have me as his wife. Uh, he is, uh, yeah, I started the radio with him. And uh, yeah, and then going to your youth parliament to, to work with different organizations and all and to, to get involved with society and then to learn more, 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 more. And then, yeah, there was this point that my husband, when he was just a friend, he proposed me, uh, he just, you know, suggested me to go to a mayorship position. And that was something like, I wasn't totally agree with, but then I, I realized that there were some activities happening around to stop me from competition because then the one who were trying to stop me, they knew that maybe if I win, then I will, I will play differently. And that was when I decided to step up. I, I got the mayorship position and I entered this different world uh, professionally. Uh, but yeah. I feel still not too completed in it. Uh, I feel like I have a lot to do. So uh, I wish before I die, I could accomplish too much more. Not only because I'm selfish, uh, it's just because I want to do more and uh, for the world and in particular for my own community. Caleb, you're mute. Sorry, I just get goosebumps and that, you know, you're just sharing the tip of the iceberg of your journey. I'd love to uh, find out from you, what were some of the big challenges that you faced in becoming the first female mayor in Africa, in Afghanistan? Because that is a, that is huge. That is something that if you had have said to someone in Afghanistan, there's going to be a female mayor, they would have laughed at you, right? They would have Gone, you've got to be kidding me. So what were some of the, I know, I know there were many challenges, but if you could share one or two challenges that you faced becoming the first female mayor in Afghanistan. Yeah, becoming one of the first female mayors has been uh, a, uh, a 
an amazing journey full of up and downs. Uh, it was a journey of uh, happiness and sadness all together. Some, uh, sometimes tears of happiness, sometimes tears of so bad sorrow and heart shed. Uh, yeah, but two, two amazing experiences that, uh, that really touch my heart every time I remember my time as my period as a male and it will, will remain always in my heart closed and uh, I am sure has been shaping my life uh, in a very different way now is uh, one uh, uh, during mayorship I have been uh, the, the hardest experience has been the, the attacks on my life and uh, but but the one which was more, 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 it was the death of my dad. Uh, the moment I heard that he had been shot and uh, he's no more alive, I thought, I'm done here. I thought I won't be, walk again, be walking again. I won't be, uh, I won't be able to run anymore this entire thing. I, I was just about to, for a few minutes, I was just about to give up. But then my husband was there, he hugged me and he was like, you know, uh, telling me entire these minutes, like more than 10, 15 minutes, he talked, he was, I was crying and he was talking to me and telling me repeatedly that I have to stay strong. This is what it is. It came my way and I have to do, I have to behave uh, more mature with this and uh, I have to show the, uh, those uh, enemies of my life as uh, yeah, and those who just want to shut my voice for their own benefits uh, that they can't silence me they can't stop me doesn't matter what they do uh, so yeah this was the worst experience losing my dad and it is still a very big 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 dark mark in my heart uh, I still remember the blood of my dad I still remember the cool and his hate I still, uh, I still feel so terribly hard when I remember that I wasn't able to hug him. Uh, I still uh, feel broken when I remember that he messaged me the same day, just minutes before he dies, that come home, we miss you. And he was missing me and he couldn't meet me and he left me forever and ever that was the worst and that will remain the worst one and the best one is the moment i was leaving my my leaving my office to a new position in defense ministry of afghanistan and i realized that there were some of my colleagues the same colleagues that were you know that were walking out of office the first day when i wanted to enter the office the same colleagues had some of them had tears in their eyes uh, because i was leaving and they they wanted me to stay so yeah these two these two are are the most amazing experiences of my period you that just yeah that i uh, i feel your hurt and, and, and grief it's just it's harrowing to listen to your journey and story um you know, being brave is not the word for you. It's it's more than brave, um, and you, you've made a huge impact uh, in people's lives. Not just women, but in people's lives. You've given people this belief in you can achieve things if you really want to in life. And again, I know Bashir has been a real solid rock in your life and has supported you incredibly well. Something that I would like to ask you is. What were some of the really wonderful achievements and projects during your tenure as a mayor? What were your what were some of the wonderful things that you created and you 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 brought to life while you were in mayorship? Uh, two three things that I'm really proud of uh, during my mayorship, and uh, I'm sure the people living in city the ones who who have been witnessing my work clearly and who are judging me by my work, not by my gender. They also agree on this, that you know, first it was uh, corruption uh, uh, 
in municipality office. It was it was the worst type of corruption uh, going on. And there was a group of colleagues working in the office that they were that had no qualification. They were uh, all at least 12 past uh, people working in municipality office despite hundreds, thousands uh, educated uh, university graduated people were uh, walking jobless around this city and they had no chance to enter the office because the office was kind of in control of a mafia system. So bringing this office out of those mafia's hands and then uh, reforming the office and, you know, uh, kind of ending the corruption system by, by in, uh, in, uh, installing some uh, some some systems which was uh, you know helping by revenues projects and all management too uh, that was one thing that i'm so proud of it and that's something that still uh, works and still helps that office to run ahead uh, at least in a good way uh, uh, secondly it was the projects that we were run the more important one was this uh, a woman, a market for women. And it was an underground market for women, uh, and I was really eager to to you know finish that as soon as I we could and to open it for pupils, uh, which uh, was really uh, uh, kind of a very very big dream. And now, unfortunately. Uh, it's been uh, because of Taliban, since they are in control, uh, unfortunately, that uh, work of the project is totally stopped. And uh, we don't uh, have uh, uh, the hell is this? We could hear you. You no, it, it just froze for a bit. We could hear. Yeah, I thought like yeah, I yeah. thought like uh, I have lost. Uh, so yeah, uh, so but now that project is stopped. Uh, no work on that project because municipality office has no enough budget to uh, do the construction work of the project, and definitely no one cares about a market for women in that country. Now, uh, when it comes to the leaders of Taliban or responsible of government. And the other one was the city cleaning and city management, uh, the, including uh, building uh, streets of the city, uh, that in cooperation with um, two, three other governmental departments, we have been able to not only uh, develop the city in a good way and then help the city uh, roads being built after decades and decades inside the city. Uh, but we were able to uh, to clean the city from those mafia land mafias who were grabbing lands uh, illegally uh, and then uh, uh, kind of register those a big amount of land like i like more than thousand uh, of land to uh government system uh which will remain uh a, a big big uh achievement for the entire provincial administration uh for for next two long years wow and now that's all been undone, right? That's all just things have just fallen down and it's like a, a massive avalanche that's just broken up everything. And and, and again, I, I, I've got a couple of questions a little bit later on that I, I, I've been thinking about asking you. Out of all the things that you've managed to achieve, I know one thing you haven't done is give up, that's for sure. Okay, I know you, 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 you're not giving up and that's one thing I know you won't give up. What was the one sort of particular inspiring or moving moment in your life that really reaffirms you and your commitment to this cause that is so important. What is that one thing? What is what is driving 
Zarifa Gavari. Hmm. There are dozens. I I I can't put just one, but uh, no. If I answer it, could I could I uh, say two instead of one? You can say as many as you want. <laughs> oh, um. So first, it's uh, there was one day. Uh, I uh, the moment it was uh, the time when I was uh, I I have got born and uh, I had uh, I was in hospital. Uh, I had dozens of. Uh, surgeries and I had like a very tough time. It was 10 days out of social media, out of everything. And after 10 days, only this finger was out of bandage. And I was able to open my uh, phone. And that was the day that my dad was also there in hospital in my room to visit me. Uh, and my siblings, it was even one there, my family. And I opened my phone and going through social media, I realized that people have been talking so 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 amazingly uh, bluff about whatever whatever happened uh, uh, with me. There were people putting in like Zarifa Rafari have been born uh, in a party with girl with boys. She was partying, drinking, and making fun with boys. That's why she got born, and she had like. Uh, bad re relations or good relations with boys. She had blah, blah, blah. It was like dozens of things. Despite I was, and this was the moment that I was, I was really, really going through hard time. And then coming to the social media and learning this from the same people that you are there to serve them. You are facing this all because you try to be a voice for them. It was really hard. It was really tough to bear. So I, I, I suddenly started crying. So then there was, was my dad uh, uh, coming close to me and take my phone out of my hand, telling me that what happened. Uh, he asked me what happened. I was like, I, I have been through my social media and people talk so bad about me while, uh, while it's not true. Uh, so then my dad was like, okay, after you are discharged of hospital, you are not going to office anymore. So then I was like, uh, no, ma, no, dad, you're joking. So he was like, no, I'm serious. Because if you're not able to handle this, then you're not able to go and, and walk more further. So just go and sit at home. No, no need to uh, go forward. So... Uh, that was the time, uh, and then he told me that uh, the, you're living in a country where people uh, are doing anything to put a woman down, despite harassing, despite uh, targeting her personality, despite anything. So if as a norm, as an educated woman, you can't face that, then you're wasting your time and everyone else. That was the best lesson, and that is the that is something that drives me more. And yeah, now, uh, right now, if I tell you just since uh, a few months, it's a different girl. Uh, I'm, as I told you before, I'm mom, mom to beautiful Lara. She, she, since she's born, I'm living, I'm living entirely for her because I want her to live different life inside the country of, inside a country that she belongs to, Afghanistan, uh, with more better opportunities than her mom. So fighting for her, doesn't matter what. Oh, just amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you for such incredible answers. And I just look at that and hear what you're sharing. And I just love the fuel. I love the energy. I love what has inspired you and it's actually giving you a real trigger to go forth and, and literally conquer. And I suppose for, for someone who has had such, let's put it realistically, a, an interesting life, a very challenging life, a very a life also full of turmoil uh, and a life that you had the opportunity to turn around and do something amazing. And I suppose one question that I'm sure 
well, I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you know, often people say, why did this happen to me? Or do we turn that around and say, why did this happen for me? And that trigger is, is definitely, I see that within you. And I would love to ask you, you know, when it comes to your future plans and, you know, those aspirations for continuing your work in, in promoting gender equality and women's rights, what are those amazing plans that you've got that you would love to share with our audience? Uh, more important, I, I think if we want to tackle uh, challenges on the way of gender equality is uh, education for all women. That's so important. I really, really want to focus more on that. Uh, educational right to evil one, to uh, uh, in particular communities like Afghanistan, where still more than 70% of women population are uneducated. Secondly, it's about, uh, secondly, what I really plan is about bringing a global unity among, among uh, women so they can be uh, leaders of their own community, they can be a one voice for for shared problems, they can be all together and stand in solidarity against all injustices. Uh, and, uh, you know, more importantly, I feel it is so important that women start leaving themselves, coming up and standing in front line and then, you know, taking the charge of the world. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so, uh, you know, committed and I am really, feeling uh, so good to say this clearly that the world is not doing so good in the hands of male leaders. So we need some uh, more uh, women leaders to take the charge of the world, Ardo, and uh, in particular in politics, because we are already running uh, to a war. Uh, and. and uh, I'm afraid there will be more bigger wars coming on our way because some some men are just there to kill and they, they know only to kill and to destroy. But I believe if women are there, they can, because mothers are not, well, they will never ever get uh, people to die or to, and, or to, to make them to die. So these are the things that I want to do it in future. I know the last one is too big mission, too too big dream, but yeah, I can, I can do, I can start it, uh, I can start doing that from my own, uh, my own home. I can be the leader of uh, my own uh, life and community, or if possible. Uh, places that I belong to, and I can, if not me, I can raise my goal to be one of them. So anyone can start from within themselves. Sarifa, so I've, you know, as, as, as an organization and being privileged to have met you, but as an organization, uh, one thing I've always maintained, A, I get to work, or we as the British School of Excellence, we get to work with the most incredible women and men, but I, I've always been a huge fan of women. I think women take on too much and uh, women are definitely taken for granted in, in many uh, parts of the world and in society. And it really is something I couldn't agree with you more. I think if we had more women in leadership roles, pre predominantly running countries, there would be less destruction, devastation. There would be a, there would be conversations that would be had. There would be rationale brought to the table and there would be, very little arrogance and very little sort of machoism and heroism kicking off there. And I couldn't agree with you more. You put that really, really uh, brilliantly. And, and I'm all 100% behind you. And I hope they, whether you're a male or female, uh, would hopefully agree that what Zarif has just shared with us on that particular scenario is, is it couldn't be, you know, more to the point. And I really thank you for that. A, saying that, but also having the bravity, being brave enough to, to share your view on that, because we will always get people pushing back on that. So that is really wonderful to hear. Now, something that if you had to give um, either your younger self or not only just your younger self, not your beautiful Lara, but just women out there, young women who really, really aspire 
to be leaders and make a difference in their communities, amongst their families, amongst the countries they live in. And whether it be reasonably, you know, fairly straightforward circumstances or challenging circumstances, what would you, what would you suggest? What guidance would you give those people, those beautiful young women who have aspirations? Oh, uh, thank you for it. It's, it's uh, first of all, uh, before answering the question, I, uh, I not only, uh, you know, dare to, dare to uh, share my uh, opinion on the leadership of women, but I believe it. I know as a woman, I know it, it will be wonderful if, if, if globally the globe is going to be led by women. Trust me, there will be no war, uh, as you said. I totally agree on that too. So, uh, yeah, on, on uh, giving advice to those women, um, first of all, I don't think I am in that spot to give that big advices, but uh, yeah, just as, uh, as a personal experience. Guys, believe on your own selves. Um, I will tell them that believe yourself, uh, encourage yourself, uh, always love yourself. And then, uh, you know, uh, be as brave as to face whatever comes to your way, uh, tackle it. And then, you know, at the end of it, just if it's good, uh, you know, enjoy it. If it's bad, take it as a lesson of life, but never give up. The way you bring, uh, you know, those experience to, experiences together and uh, the way you could be as brave as possible to believe yourself, to, to encourage yourself to take more. I am sure, you know, you can achieve anything possible. Absolutely. Just solid advice. And that's very much from the heart. And I think if any young lady or even young man out there is in needs inspiration, all, I'm, all, all they need to do is a, watch your Netflix uh, series and, and listen to your journey um, because that in itself is just the most incredible, um, inspiring story that uh, one, of the, one, one of the ones that's really resonated with me. And that's one of the reasons I was so keen for you to come on and live, learn, teach, inspire. And, you know, again, with regard to where Afghanistan is right now, where do you see things or how do you see things unfolding? Uh, with Afghan, with with Afghanistan and and women's uh, women's position within that country right now, where where is it right now? What 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 do you what do you? I know what you've got in your vision and your in this, in your sights, but where are we at right now? Oh, uh, we are in a place where to be totally forgotten by war. We are left alone. We are disconnected with world, and we feel totally disconnected with world. Uh, we feel abandoned. We feel, uh, uh, you know, kind of totally uh, uh, destroyed by international community. Uh, the ones who are so well, you can just too. But despite all that, uh, we are committed. We are uh fighting we are not walking quickly away we are standing our ground and uh i hope change will come not if not now maybe tomorrow if not tomorrow the after tomorrow uh there is hope uh and if there is hope there is always change uh and there is always some uh opportunity so we are we are so committed on that and when it comes to women of that country trust me if women while women uh, of afghanistan are uh, victims they are uh, broken they are being uh to very bad times different in the, during different decades and since long long times but still uh, believe me, they are symbol of resistance, commitment, and bravery. The women of Afghanistan, they are, uh, they are, and their lives are totally a lesson. A lesson that everyone who walks uh, uh, the path like us could, could just 
give a look to it. Uh, Zarifa, thank you. Tell tell me, um, just hanging on that last those last few words that you you just sort of shared uh, with us about you know where where things stand and where things sit. As we look in from you know the outside, um, what could we uh, what could what could people do to sort of get out there and make a difference? How can we? get involved to, you know, get out there and, and make make a difference uh, to to what is going on, not just in Afghanistan, but obviously, you know, just out there. What, what, what do you think we should be doing? Uh, I, I'm sure there might be some obvious answers to that, but I'd love to hear from you. What could we all be doing to make a difference in this world? Uh, um, to women, uh, I, I would love to say that uh, if if a woman of the world want to change something at the core of whatever is happening around the world right now, uh, please, please stand up, you know, start leading your own communities, be leaders, raise leaders and raise more leaders and, uh, you know, trust yourselves and lead because the world needs uh, us. To, to maintain peace and harmony. And then when it comes to collectively, entirely to the international communities, uh, to the global people, uh, definitely not leaders, because I don't believe they are having uh, uh, a, a year a year to, to, to hear the voices uh, or to uh, a mind to at least uh, you know, think of what we have been through or what we are asking them. So I'm not pointing to them, but to local people of the world. Uh, right now, in particular, just right now, Afghanistan, not only Afghanistan, but entirely global is going to a very bad conflict, to a very bad situation. Unfortunately, the players, the traders of human blood, are once again there to 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 divide us into not only races, countries, borders, or our ethnicities, but right now, uh, you know, the religious war, which is newly started by Palestine, Palestine and Israel conflict, uh, that is the worst one. Uh, let's get united. Let's not let let's not let these these players and traders to 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 do this to us and that can be only possible when we stand on together uh and then solidarity against any type of war war is war doesn't matter if it's uh it's uh, going to happen by a tourist group or a government or a institution or an organization whoever kills civilian whoever destroys the countries whoever uh, uh, you know, kind of disrespect to humanity. They are terrorists, and let's let's get together and to stop them. Uh, I don't care about any anyone anywhere anything, but what I care is humanity. Let's stand for humanity, and and that can be only done, and that's only possible if we all together standing in in solidarity with each other and raising our voice against all those blood traders uh, which are playing with our lives by by some pretext of including bringing religious games to uh, to do this bad and dirty policies that they are playing uh, i feel it it is so important it is so important so i and not only I'm I'm asking it here, but nowadays I am trying to to share this through my social media pages as well, from Instagram to Twitter to Facebook, everywhere, trying to 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 say and ask everyone on this. And please, 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 uh, let's get united against this. Otherwise, we are going to face the war. Yeah. Whew. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to keep composed here, Zarifa. Um, 
there's a really burning question that I have with regard to all the pain and hurt and the torture that you've faced in your life. How have you managed as, as an amazing human being, amazing woman, how have you managed to sort of, I don't know, process this? How have you managed to stay so incredibly grounded and not only grounded, but your passion, which is obviously right there, but just grounded. And, and how have you handled this? Mm. Actually, you know, what I'm doing is just my, it's, it's a passion. What I'm doing, it's, it's what I love to, what I'm doing, it's what I believe. And it's uh, whatever I'm doing, it's, uh, uh, you know, it is what I think is right to do. So, you know, when you're doing something that you believe is right, and uh, you know that you have the ability to do it the way it's needed, uh, then I feel like um, you're okay with it and you're comfortable. So uh, that's what all. And I don't think I'm putting any extra effort on whatever I'm doing. Uh, I, I, am, I am the way uh, who normally I am. Sure, that's, yeah, and you, you, you really are one, one, one incredible woman. Zarifa, I know when we met, I know when we met and we met all those incredible people together, and I made it very clear when we were all there together that you couldn't have brought in a more amazing group of people together who all just seemed to gel very well. And there was talk uh, about resurrecting Pegla FM, your, your radio station. Where are we at or where are you at right now with the radio station uh, and and how is is it back up running again or where are you at with the radio station? Oh, unfortunately, uh, I, 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 I thought we could bring this back to life so soon, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's it, it couldn't be done that way. Uh, we are so far from our targeted, uh, uh, you know, uh, goal, or maybe uh, we started a fun, uh, actually, you know, that we started a fundraising for the radio station to bring it back to the mission. Uh, and then that fundraising is totally not going so good uh, because no one will give money to a radio station in Afghanistan, definitely. Um, nowadays, there are so much more important around the globe, uh, and especially for people who love coffee and not to miss them. So definitely, um, there are too many more. Uh, so they will, that's, that's what it is. Uh, I feel, uh, I feel bad about that, but, uh, but I'm not giving up. Doesn't matter if I am not able to do it this time, maybe few few months later or few times later but uh, bringing Radio Pegla uh, on a mission back is is a target and I'm going to do this as soon as, as I am able to manage the financial issues with it. All right. So anyone out there listening to this, you know, I really would appreciate you taking the time to, to go on a journey and discover more about Zarifa and, and her vision and focus and passion. And, and just before we close out, I mean, this hour has just run away. I don't know where it's gone. What can people around the world, uh, how can they support your cause? And, um, you know, what platforms do we have out there? I know we've got, and I'd like our producer to please bring out your website and, and also share your Amazon book page. And, and we might as well do that right uh, in, the, in the next moment or so. But, you know, can individuals and organizations from around the world support your causes through various different channels? Yeah, definitely. Please, everyone, join uh, my Twitter, my LinkedIn, and my Instagram, as well my Facebook page, where I'm, I'm sharing not only daily uh, uh, situation of Afghanistan, but definitely my work as well. So you can decide where to support and how. Uh, yeah, my website is also somewhere where you can connect with me and my work easily. Uh, yeah, uh, and then last but not least, please uh, uh, read my book, uh, Zarifa, Women's Battle in a Man's World, which is now out in eight languages. 
And this, I'm not asking you to read this book because it's my book. I'm asking you all to read this book because this is a book about Afghanistan, about the woman of Afghanistan, and it's it's first time. I believe it's first time, and I am I'm I'm, I'm sure even one who knows about Afghanistan and the story of the country agrees with me that uh, it's first time that a local citizen of that country, a girl who has been raised during entire these last 25, 30 years, uh, is, is writing something about Afghanistan and bringing up the, the real stories of, of that country and the woman of that country. So please give a read to that. It's, it's, uh, it's so important to understand what we, are, we have been through and what we are going through. I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, Zarifa, for taking the time. I know you've got your beautiful little girl, and I do know that you've got the most supportive husband in Bashir, but it really is a true honor for us here at the British School of Excellence with our Live, Learn, Teach, Inspire program that we run to try and get as much information and, and news out there to support not just you, but to support the bigger cause that you are so passionate about. and. We can only thank you for, for what you do and, and what you've been doing and what you're gonna to continue to do. So a huge thank you from me, from our producer, who's been very quietly beavering in the background and for all of those amazing people who have made the time to watch this episode and they will be able to watch it going forward. But I thank you so much and I really hope and pray that we get together in the very near future, whether I come over to Germany or you come to the UK or who knows where we might meet again in the near future. But thank you so much. Thank you, Philip. Thank you so much. Definitely, I'm blessed uh, to have Bashir as my life partner. And thank you to him. He is taking care of Laura right now. Uh, he's a good father and a good husband. Uh, blessed to have him. Uh, but overall, it's been a pleasure talking to you on the yeah, uh, it's, it's nice to, to speak on different things once again in particular about my country the more I speak the more I enjoy thank you so much looking forward to meeting you in person again and uh, it, it was a great experience Shukran thank you so much take care Zarifa thank you all very much for your time energy and effort on the Live Learn Teach Inspire today uh, on what Zarifa had to share and I really hope all of you out there listening got some massive value from that. And until next time, we've got another Live, Learn, Teach, Inspire taking place in November. So please watch the space. And we've got some very exciting things that are starting to unfold and happen. I wish you all the very best wherever you are in the world. And until next time, thank you. This program is brought to you in part by the British School of Excellence and founder, Mr. Philip Sykes, building confidence changing lives. Do you share our view that etiquette is a set of modern life skills that are essential for personal and professional success? Join us as an etiquette coach and change people's lives through the power of etiquette and manners. The last few days have been really amazing. I uh, had the trainer trainer course from uh, the British School of Etiquette and I must say it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made and one of the best investments I've made in, in my own training and development. Now words alone will not describe the transformation and the positive path that I have traveled with the British School of Etiquette. I find really I, I learned a lot from the lessons this time I came. The last few days with the British School of Etiquette have been fantastic. And what I've learned now is really beyond my expectations. This is the most rewarding experience and the best investment I have made this year. It was just great. I learned so much and when I go back to Belgium, I will incorporate a lot of it uh, into um, my day-to-day -day life and business. It's been absolutely wonderful for the whole week that we were here. I feel transformed and I feel like blowing a trumpet and tell people come and do this school, this class is the best, this is the best school ever. Uh, you should take it, it's just, it will change your life immediately. I am now able to teach other people how to bring the best of them. Thank you. Thank you, Peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
Thank you to our clients for their testimonials on the Train the Trainer program. Our exponential and global growth is so significant that we've evolved from the British School of Etiquette to the British School of Excellence, where we're investors in people. Let us invest in you and your career. Contact us to become an etiquette coach. Go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. Start your career and elevate your success today.